today I'm going to be doing some work around the house. I'm going to show you how to put together a home network by pulling Ethernet cable and installing a basic server cabinet. As most of you know, I just moved into what I guess North Americans would call a townhouse. It needs a lot of work and like most Chinese construction, all the interior walls are concrete and steel. One of the downsides to that is Wi-Fi signals don't get very far and I have four floors that need Wi-Fi. At the moment, I'm still only using part of two floors, but if I can rent out the third and fourth floors, I'll be able to have this place almost for free. Good internet will help get good tenants, so that's today's project. To start with, I've got a fantastic Wi-Fi router from Synology. It's absolutely fantastic. I've used Synology's network storage for years and there's no way I could live without it now. Great quality, best UI. Not sponsored, just a big fan of their products. Their routers have a wireless mesh option that, called, that can almost but not quite cover the house. If not for everything being concrete, it would be perfect. So today I'm going to show you how to pull CAT6E cable so we can get one router and two access points to show up as a single wireless network. Okay, I'm in the first floor kitchen. There is plastic condo rack that goes up to the room on the second floor that I'm using as an office since it has air conditioning. I want to jack down here I can plug an access point into. So we're going to fit our fish tip into the candle rack and wait for it to come out in the office. Since I'm working alone, I have a little Xiaomi IP camera that I'll be using to see what's going on at the other end of things. Even still, I'll be getting my ex exercise running back and forth. I normally run Cat5, but I know you'll probably complain, so for this occasion, I'm running Cat6E as the backbone between the access points on the first to his third floor. The third floor access point should have enough signal strength to cover the fourth floor, but if not, I'll wait and get another router later. I need to be careful with spanning and only fix a little at a time. Right now, I have air conditioning in two rooms and no hot water. I'll fix that bit by bit. My past two apartments have good can do it in the walls and I like having a hot wire network for transferring video files faster so I've done this a few times. The Cat6C is pretty heavy stuff and I'm a little worried about getting it through the conduit, but we'll see. Let's get started. I need to get this bit to come out on the second floor. I got this new fish tape because it's just a few dollars on Taobao and my old one was pretty ready and I don't want you making fun of it. Now, I don't like using uncoated steel fish tape. The main wiring in China is often really dodgy and you never know what's going to be carrying currents that shouldn't be. Links to everything that I've got links for in the description box. If I don't have a link, I don't remember where to get it. Now, a word about my clothes. You know, I put function before form when it comes to protective gear and don't play cute around power tools. But it's been about 35 Celsius, 95 Fahrenheit here in Shenzhen while I've been doing renovation on the layer, what I call this place, since every supervillain needs a layer. I didn't have air conditioning, so got a touch of history toys. I don't really sweat, so it happens really easily. I then tried working in shorts and a sports bra, but got all scraped and banged up and have no pockets worth calling a pocket. The other thing is, when you work in the heat, you drink a lot of water. And you know, girls, we pee a lot. Keeping overalls and coveralls off the floor in messy bathrooms, not fun. Utilities are pretty close. You get ventilation, easy bathroom tricks and pockets. It would be costly to import one though, so I found a pair of men's cargo pants on Taobao with really good pockets and have been cut into a kind of skirt. I found some leg and arm sleeves with built-in knee and elbow pads that have been working great. Much fewer bruises and scrapes on my arms and legs, and they seem to breathe pretty well. Okay, looks good. Now let's do it again on the third floor. I tried heavy leather boots 
but honestly I'm less likely to drop something on my foot than I'm to slip off a ladder so I wanted something with good grips that I could feel surfaces with in Japan and Hong Kong the construction workers doing the bamboo scaffolding wear soft shoes and so far it seems better for my knees than heavy boots for now just sticking with a t-shirt since vest or any kind of two harness rub in bad ways i bent my head against the bottom of the sink a few times then scrape it on the drop ceiling so i got this little hard plastic cap to keep my hair in the dust and the dirt out of it and protect my head it's honestly done that more than once i know wearing a helmet for home diy seems a little excessive, uh, excessive but given all the lumps i have on my skull after the first week i think the professional wear them for a pretty good reason but anyway don't laugh at my clothes it's still a work in progress and it's pretty silly looking but it's better than getting heat stroke or all scraped and bruised I just need to take a breath and cool off for a minute it's so hot as most of you know i've been through several rounds of the founding and getting this channel to where it is now has been pretty challenging of course no one's entitled to earn a living off youtube but i've always sold a lot of whatever product or service i feature on my channel and there's really in that that's a job all this wouldn't be possible without the generous support of JLCPCB and Creality 3D. You have no idea how many dodgy companies I have to turn down before I found two that I really believe in and it's been great working with them. If nothing else, they put up with me when it comes time to advocate for customers. I'm not always very gentle about it. If you do any sort of work with electronics or hardware, I'm sure you're familiar with JLC PCB. They're the largest PCB prototyping company in the world. Up until now, if you wanted PCBA, printed circuit board assembly, if you wanted not just the circuit board, but all the electronics parts put on the board, you have to go to another company or do it yourself. Well, when I started working with them, the first thing I asked the community is, what do you want from P JLC? And the community said, PCBA. And JLC listened. So now you can get everything done in one place. And I hope you do, because as I've said before, the absolute best way you can support this channel is to support the companies that believe in me and believe in the hardware community. Okay, so this network cabinet costs about $30 in China with a power strip built-in. I would imagine a little more in the West. The metal is a bit thin, but again, this place is rental and over specing something rel relatively unimportant and blowing your budget before you get to more important things is a pretty common engineering mistake. This is absolutely sufficient for the job. I bought it without a fan because they use the cheapest fans which are noisy so i'll just buy a nice quiet fan don't go without a fan for long heat buildup will kill your gear i'm going to attach it to the wall over the ugly hole and run the cat six cables in the back the router has to go on the top or the metal box will block the signal Because all the walls are concrete, this means anytime you want to do anything from handing a shelf to installing an air conditioner, you need a hammer drill. This is mine, her name is Pollyann, and 
She was a very generous gift from a follower who heard I was having trouble finding good tools that from line up for me to lift powerful and good quality. I've been to the hardware store and tried out a ton. So far, the Makita 18 volt brushless series seem to do that best. They're a bit out of my budget though, so if anyone has contacts at Makita, help a girl out. I sell a ton of whatever I use on this channel and no sponsor has ever lost money on giving me a review unit. I get the Makita girl concept was a bit dated and the whole thing a little cringy, but having a Makita girl who's competent to use her and wearing protective gear is something different and I think everyone would be okay with it. The Bill & Vacuum gets almost all the dust so it's really good to use around electronics because there is no mess. Okay, that was just the pilot hole and now I changed the drill bit and we are going to make the final holes. Isn't she amazing? Now I have 5 packs of stickers and the first 5 people to guess correctly in the comments where Polly Ann got her name will get a pack mailed to them for free anywhere in the world. That's it for today. Next week, I'm going to show you how to terminate the cable and organize your network cabinet.